April from April's Home and today I thought I would kick off my What We Eat in a Week video with a little bit of an introduction. I have never filmed a What We Eat in a Week before and I thought it'd be really fun to try this out. I have filmed What We Ate for Dinner videos um, a few times in the past, but never a whole week's worth of food. So I thought it would be really fun to do since this month in February I wasn't able to film a grocery haul. We haven't done any big grocery haul this month. We've just been stopping in for fresh ingredients and kind of working through our pantry and freezer. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at what we eat in a week. I'll be sharing with you some of our breakfasts. We tend to eat a very similar breakfast every single day. My husband eats oatmeal nearly every day for breakfast and I kind of have either just a small breakfast with a little bit of toast and coffee, or I make an egg and toast, and occasionally, sometimes I will also eat hot cereal, um, like oatmeal or another type of uh, hot cereal. So I will go ahead and share some of those with you, and any different ones that we have. And then some of our lunches, again, we eat a lot of leftovers and similar things for lunches um, as we eat for dinner but I still thought I would go ahead and share that with you just so you can see what that's like. And then I've got my meal plan here. I've been working on my meal plan for the rest of this week. We will start with Sunday and that will be tomorrow. Sunday's dinner is Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Sunday for our family dinner. We will be having a baked potato bar with all sorts of toppings. We'll be having corn dip and chips and we will be having a cherry pie bubble up and that recipe the cherry pie bubble up you'll see is really similar to the recipe that i shared for apple pie bubble up but instead of apple pie filling we'll be using cherry pie filling instead just so it'll be pink and pretty i thought that that would be a nice uh dessert since it's so close to valentine's day so we'll start with that. Now, I don't film during a family dinner night. It's just not something I do. I have all the kids over and grandkids over. I just like to respect their privacy, so I won't be um, filming during that. But I will be inserting some clips of our baked potato bar, all the toppings and our dessert, and I will be able to film a little bit about how I make our corn dip because I will be making that tonight so it can be chilling in the fridge all ready for tomorrow. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the things that I do for prep work in advance of that. But I will just be including a clip of what we have for Sunday family dinner. And again, that is Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow. Um, and we'll be having a baked potato bar. And then I've got some other fun meals planned for the rest of the week. So I hope you enjoy taking a look at what we eat in a week. So it is Saturday night and I'm just prepping some food before tomorrow. I like to get a few things done before family dinner night if uh, there's food that could be pre-made. That way I don't have to rush after church to make up our food. So tonight I thought I would go ahead and prep the corn dip for tomorrow. And my husband is helping me prep the bacon for the baked potato bar. We've got one batch of bacon out and one more still in the oven. So we're going to start this corn dip here with about two thirds of this uh, large container. This is a 24 ounce container. I need 16 ounces of sour cream. I'm gonna put it right in this bowl here. So we've got that in there. I'll put this in the fridge. And then we need a cup of mayonnaise. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my cup of mayo. Okay, so we've got our mayonnaise and sour cream. I'm gonna just add a little onion powder just eye in it there. Probably like a teaspoon or so. So that and then we're going to drain all of our vegetables. You'll need three cans of corn and one can of Rotel. The trick with the Rotel is that it has to be very very drained. I will put that in this little mesh strainer to get out all of the liquid from this so it doesn't make the dip um, too moist. So I'm going to go ahead and drain these out now and then I'm also going to use this. Usually I use a mild jalapeno. They did not have that available in our store today. They were all sold out of a lot of their jalapenos. So we're just going to use this one here. This is a 12 ounce jar. I'm going to drain this as well and then I'm going to go ahead and chop these either in half or in quarters if they're too big so that we get a nice even distribution of the jalapenos throughout the dip here. So I'm going to go ahead and drain all of my veggies now and then we'll come back and add those to the mix. So I've got my veggies all drained out and you can see here 
the Rotel. I have used a spoon to press out most of the moisture too so that it really doesn't have too much liquid in it. Again, we don't want to make the dip too um, soggy. That was just a standard can of Rotel and then we've got three cans of corn. I'm gonna add that. Hoping I got a big enough bowl here. I might need to transfer it to a different bowl. This is one of the last few cans we have of the Kirkland um, Golden Sweet Corn. I just love this corn. Our Costco doesn't sell this one anymore and I sure hope they bring it back. This corn is always so sweet and crunchy. I just love it. So we'll add that one. Again, these are drained cans of corn and that one. They're all a little bit different. You can really tell that this one is a lot lighter than the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that together now. Just like so, just get it all combined. And I am gonna transfer this to a bigger bowl because I still have to add the cheese and the jalapenos and this looks like it's about to top out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this a little bit more and transfer it to a larger mixing bowl. Okay, so I forgot to hit record a few minutes ago when I was adding the jalapenos there. But I added the chopped up jalapenos. I chopped them up um, in about like somewhere in half, somewhere in quarters. There were a few whole ones in there kind of see them in there right here. And then I also added four cups of cheddar jack cheese to here. And I also added a little scoop more sour cream and another dash of the onion powder. I'm gonna go ahead and test this now with a Tostito scoop. So that's what we're using for this. We'll be serving um, this dip with the Tostito scoops. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. Make sure those jalapenos aren't way too hot. Make sure to get a little corn in there and cheese and all the good yummy flavors in here. Now this um, dip also tastes really good if you leave it to set in the fridge for at least a couple of hours. Um, and of course I'm making this overnight so this will really, the flavors will blend really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so that turned out absolutely perfect. The jalapenos are a little bit hotter than normal, but they're not too hot, so I think they'll be just fine. I'm gonna scoop about half of that in this smaller bowl, and then the other half I'll put in the fridge. When I'm making a big dip, I only like to put half out, or even sometimes just like a third of it out at a time, so that I can swap that out regularly, so it doesn't sit out too long. So I definitely wouldn't wanna put this whole bowl out at once. So we'll start with this little bowl. That'll be the perfect um, appetizer for Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Sunday. Okay, so we've got our corn dip in our serving bowl already, as well as a nice big tote full of refill dip. And if we have any leftover, I think that this would be really good cooked with some chicken to make like a, jalap a creamy jalapeno chicken. I may have to try that if I have any leftover, um, but definitely absolutely wonderful with those Tostitos and a very fun dip. And then we also have our bacon, our last batch of bacon out. This is gonna cool and then we're gonna get this all um, broken up into bacon bits for our baked potato bar. And then I'll show you tomorrow all the rest of the fixings that we have for our baked potato bar. Okay, so today is Monday morning and it's Valentine's Day. I showed clips of yesterday's dinner. We had our baked potato bar and I made a delicious dessert. This cherry pie bubble up. I will include my link for the apple pie bubble up recipe in the description box. The only difference with the cherry pie bubble up is that instead of apple pie filling, it is cherry pie filling and I didn't add any extra cinnamon to that. So the same recipe without the apple, um, pie filling or the cinnamon, just the cherry pie filling, and it's absolutely delicious. So for lunch today, we are having leftovers from last night. We have a bunch of ingredients left over from our baked potato bar. So I just went ahead and did a baked potato with everything. We had broccoli and chili. There are the potatoes, some chopped up ham and bacon, and green onions and red onions and cheese. We also have sour cream out. So lots of good toppings. This way somebody could have done a chili, 
cheese and onion, potato, or ham and broccoli. Then a lot of us just tried a little bit of everything and it was delicious all together. So that's my lunch today. It's actually sort of a brunch. I just had coffee for breakfast. My husband had his oatmeal. So I'm just having a little bit of a bigger lunch today. Baked potato, a little bit of our corn dip leftover, some cherry pie bubble up for dessert. And then my husband also really likes to have this with lunch um, a lot of the times or before dinner, some peaches and cottage cheese. So those that's kind of a big lunch for us, but today it is a leftover day and we're having these for our lunch. And then we'll have a lot of these leftovers also to incorporate into this week's dinners. Okay, so it is Monday night, Valentine's Day, and I'm getting our meal going. I'm using some of the baked potatoes leftover from last night's baked potato bar to make some twice baked potatoes. So I have scooped out the middle of four potatoes here, two little ones, this big one, and then I cut one big one in half and I've got the um, potatoes in here. I'm gonna add some milk, sour cream, some pepper here. Go ahead and add a little pepper right now. And some of the green onions that were also left over. I'm gonna get that mixed up and I will refill the potatoes with them and get those in the oven to bake. And we'll be having some little New York strip steaks with this as well as some sauteed green beans. Okay, so I've got the mashed potatoes all mixed up. I put in about a cup of cheese, uh, probably a quarter cup of sour cream, a little uh, bit of milk and some pepper. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the potatoes. So here the potatoes are, the twice baked potatoes, all full of the mixture. I topped them with a teeny tiny bit of cheese on top here. And now I'm gonna pop them in a 375 degree oven to bake. Um, I imagine it'll take between 20 and 30 minutes, but I will keep an eye on those and I'll let you know how long they took. And while these are baking, I will start prepping my steak and my green beans. So I have decided to steam my green beans instead of sauteing them. Um, I've just put my little steamer basket here in the bottom of my pot and I've got these green beans from Trader Joe's, the French green beans. So I've just got them in here. They will shrink down a little bit. And then I've also decided to sprinkle in some of the leftover red onions. Um, from last night's baked potato bar. I love a little bit of onion flavor with the green beans. So I'll just let those steam along with them, just give them a little extra flavor. And when I serve these, I'll probably drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of melted butter. Um, I'll kind of play it by ear and test these out when they're done baking. I'm just gonna get these on the stove and let them steam and cook while the baked potatoes are cooking as well. Okay, the green beans and the potatoes are cooking, so I thought I would get the steak started now. And here you can see the green beans uh, steaming away. All I've used to season the steaks is a little bit of the Montreal steak seasoning. I love that. I'm just going to cook these up real quick. Then I'll get the whole meal served and show you what that looks like. Our green beans are all done and I have drizzled them with a little bit of melted butter. Not too much, but just a little bit. And our twice baked potatoes are out of the oven. You can see that the tops have gotten nice and brown, just a little bit of golden brown there. I did turn up the heat on these. They took about half an hour and for the last 10 minutes, I did raise the temperature from 375 to 400. My oven does tend to run a little bit cool and they weren't really um, browning, it seemed as much as I would want them to. I just like to get a little bit of that um, golden crust on the top of my twice baked potatoes. So those look delicious. My steaks are done and the green beans are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our dinner plate. So here's our dinner all ready to go. We've got our twice baked potato, our steak and our green beans with some onions and a little bit of butter. I've set out some A1 steak sauce and sour cream. We like to have that with our steak. And that is our Valentine's dinner tonight. We used up leftover potatoes and we cooked some delicious steak and green beans to go with it. Today for lunch, I'm not doing any cooking. I'm just working through some more leftovers I had a morning meeting, sort of went into lunch, so I had a small turkey sandwich at the cafe that we met in for our meeting, and um, so when I came home I thought I'd round that out a little bit since I hadn't really had a breakfast um, with some tea. I decided to try the orange pico tea this time. I normally have my Irish breakfast but I'm gonna give this orange pico tea a try. If you saw in my recent video, my haul of different black teas from Twinings, I'm trying to work my way through trying some of those new black teas. So that's what I'm having for lunch today, along with some corn dip that I made for Sunday with some chips 
and a loaded baked potato that I made last night for dinner. We had some leftovers of that. So that is my simple little lunch, and here in a little bit I'll get started on tonight's dinner. Okay, so I'm about to start dinner tonight, and I decided on split pea soup. We've got a ton of split peas, as you can see here, and then I have a leftover diced ham from our baked potato bar. This is uh, Jenny O turkey ham, which I really love. You can use this in so many ways. I love getting one of the little half-sized Jenny O turkey hams and dicing it up like this for soups and casseroles and breakfasts and of course on top of our baked potatoes. So that'll go in our split pea soup today. We'll just be doing a very simple split pea soup and ham. I, I'm going to just start with a big box of broth here. This is a 48 ounce size. And now normally I start my soup with fresh carrots, fresh celery, and fresh onion. But I thought I would try these out today. Um, I purchased these from Azure Standard. I actually lost, I believe I lost the footage of this grocery haul, unfortunately. I bought a bunch of frozen vegetables in these big five pound bulk bags. And so I really wanted to try that out because there were a couple times this winter um, previously where I couldn't get out for fresh produce. So I thought, oh, how nice it would be to have some in the freezer. So we're gonna test this out today in my split pea soup. So I'm just gonna use all frozen veggies today. I haven't used very often, I've used uh, many times frozen carrots, but I do not very often use frozen celery or onions. So we'll see how this goes. It's also really nice. Um, it's I had a meeting today, like I said earlier, and so I wasn't able to start the soup as early as I would like. So I think these um, frozen vegetables are really gonna be a time saver today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the broth in and the veggies in. Then I'm gonna rinse and sort my peas, add just some real basic seasonings today, salt, pepper, and Italian seasonings. So I've poured in my broth and some celery and onions and carrots. I'm gonna also add four cups of water here just to bring up the water level. I will probably have to add more as I add the peas as well. Break up the frozen onions there a bit. Even though these are all frozen veggies, they smell really good already cooking in this broth. Also, I have filmed my Thick as Fog split pea soup recipe. This is a very, very quick version of that same soup. Um, I will link that split pea soup recipe below. It is really a wonderful split pea soup, and it's normally how I make it. But like I said, today I'm in a hurry, and I still would like to have soup today to use up that leftover ham, and also just because we like to have soup at least three times a month, sometimes every week. Here I am just sprinkling in some uh, Italian seasoning. And next I'm gonna put in some pepper here. Just doing it by eye today. And I'll test that here in a bit too. Okay, I'm gonna get this boiling and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my peas and then get those added too. I'll probably bring up the water level and then we'll add the ham and let that cook away. So now I'm adding in my last cup of split peas. I added in four cups uh, to this today. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I'll add in another three cups of water there. And here is my second cup of ham. I'm gonna stir this in and see what I think here. I don't know that I want it to have too much ham in it. I just like a little bit of ham in there for flavor. But it might need a little bit more. We'll add in just like another slightly more than half a cup. Okay. So there we go, I'm gonna put a lid on this and let this simmer away until it's cooked. In another couple of hours, I'll come in here and make up some cornbread to go with it. And that is our split pea soup for dinner tonight. My soup is nearly done. As you can see, the peas have cooked up really nicely. They just kind of go into the broth really nicely. You don't need to puree it or anything. You can if you want, but I usually just let it cook down. And it looks delicious, it smells delicious. I did add a little bit of garlic powder to this also, and a little bit more Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. And I'm gonna let that continue bubbling away a little bit while I go ahead and cook my cornbread. Tonight, just for the ease of the meal, I'm using Jiffy corn muffin mix, and I'm just making it a little pie dish, that's the way I like to, and I serve it in little wedges. So I'm gonna cook this up and serve up dinner as soon as it's ready. So here's our split pea soup for dinner, as well as our cornbread all cooked up. I have some leftover bacon from our baked potato bar, and I love to top split pea soup with a little bit of bacon. So that will be a really nice way to use up some of these bacon crumbles leftover from baked potato night, as well as the ham 
that we also put into our soup. So that's tonight's dinner, split pea soup with ham, cornbread, and topped with a little bit of bacon. This morning for my breakfast, it is Wednesday morning, I'm gonna go ahead and make a two egg omelet. Normally I would just make one egg, sometimes I make two, but right now my chickens are young and they're laying a little bit smaller size of eggs, although they're starting to look quite a bit bigger, so that's nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a two egg easy omelet using some of the leftover diced up ham, and some cheese and some of the green onions I also have left over from our baked potato bar. So I'm gonna start by cracking my eggs in here and getting them uh, mixed up with my fork here. And I've got my pan heating up over to the side. So I have whipped up my eggs a little bit and um, put in the green onions. I'm adding a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt. And I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit of the ham right over the top here, just like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook for a bit. We'll get that flipped. I'll add some cheese, and I'll come back and show you what this turns out like. My little omelet is starting to cook up nicely. Now, I usually like to flip it once at this point here, as soon as it gets solid enough on the bottom that I can easily flip it over, just to get a little bit more cook on this side before I fill it with cheese. I don't like undercooked egg at all. Um, for me personally, that's just the way I like it. Some people would top it with cheese right now and just fold it over and cook it, but that's just not how I do it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this, then flip it back over, add the cheese, and turn it into an omelet. So here you can see I flipped it just like so, and I top it with a little bit of cheese, and I will fold it over and put it on a plate. Here's my omelet ready to go. I have topped it with a little bit of sour cream, and next I'm gonna to top it with my uh, La Victoria green taco sauce. I love this on eggs. It's really good. So there we go, there is breakfast for this morning. And I also made up some coffee here. Today I decided to add a little bit of mocha powder and whipped cream and caramel on the top. I'm definitely looking forward to this breakfast this morning. It looks really good. So that is my breakfast today. Today for lunch, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I've made a tuna fish sandwich using the skipjack tuna from Trader Joe's. And I've got some little popcorners, white cheddar popcorners here on the side. I'll have a little cup of mandarin oranges. And then I have a few of these little chocolates for dessert here. And these are the Trader Joe's dark chocolate orange sticks that I absolutely love. They're really delicious. So that's my lunch today. Nice and simple tuna fish sandwich with a few little chips and oranges on the side and a few pieces of dark chocolate orange sticks for dessert. Tonight for dinner, we are having split pea soup leftovers. And normally I would have like a bread type item with this. But earlier today, we were visiting my daughter and my little grandson. And in their town, they have a really good sandwich shop. So we picked up some sandwiches. This is like a, a Philly cheesesteak type sandwich. And I thought that would be really nice to go with our soup tonight. So that is what we brought home for dinner to go with our leftover split pea soup. So that is tonight's dinner. Okay, so this morning for breakfast, I'm cooking up some hot cereal, just some classic cream of wheat. I've got three tablespoons of cream of wheat in this little bowl pre-measured out for a single serving. And I've got a cup and a quarter of water um, on the stove, getting ready to heat up. I'm just gonna put a little dash of salt in there with it. Okay, and then I'll stir that up once it gets going and pour the uh, cream of wheat in. And before you know it, breakfast will be ready. It takes about two and a half minutes. Water is nearly boiling, and so I'll be ready to pour in the cream of wheat here. I've got a whisk that I'll just whisk it with the entire time it's cooking. And then I've also set out the things I like to top it with, cinnamon, brown sugar, and raisins. So here's my cream of wheat all done. I've topped it with a little brown sugar, cinnamon, and raisins. I've got my cup of coffee ready to go, and a little bit of milk that I can drizzle over the top of this as well if I decide I want a little bit of milk. So that is breakfast this morning, cream of wheat and coffee. Today for lunch I'm making a simple turkey and Swiss sandwich. I'm gonna go ahead and toast this in my toaster oven a little bit too so that it's a nice warm sandwich and I'll be serving this alongside a cup of my split pea soup for lunch. So my sandwich is out of the toaster oven here. I've put a little mayo and a little honey mustard on the bread and then the turkey and the Swiss and I put it in here like this so that this gets a little warm and toasty and the cheese melts. 
and it's just very lightly toasted. You could just barely see a little bit of brown there. I just like it to be nice and warm and a little bit toasty, but not overly toasted. And here's my lunch, my turkey Swiss sandwich with my cup of split pea soup, and I'm having a peach Perrier along with that today for my lunch. My husband also had soup in a sandwich. He just made a little bit of a bigger bowl of soup and had his sandwich with that as well. So that's our lunch and the way we like to use up our soup throughout the week for lunches and dinner. Tonight for dinner we will be having um, sausages and peppers over rice. I normally would make this recipe with Italian sausages, but tonight I only have the Kirkland brats, which will work just fine in this recipe as well. I will only be using half of this packet, so I'm going to cut this open and thaw these out a little bit in the microwave and get them cooking in the pan. So I've put the sausages in a little bit of water in a frying pan. I've turned this up a bit. I'm gonna let them cook away in here until they're um, completely thawed out and start to, to cook a bit. When they're about halfway done, I will add the peppers and onions and start the rice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this so that they start cooking through. Okay, so I just added the pepper and onion blend. I added two bags of these because they're a little bit on the smaller side and I love to have plenty of peppers and onions. These are gonna go ahead and steam. I'll check the water level, see if it needs a little bit more and I'll go ahead and cover this and let this cook away and get started on my rice. Okay, so the sausage, peppers, and onions are all cooked up and so is my rice and I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner served up. So here's dinner all on the plate with our rice and sausages with onions and peppers. I've also set out some soy sauce and sweet chili sauce to go with our rice just in case we want some of that as well. So a nice simple weeknight dinner. This morning for breakfast I'm making a soft boiled egg with a piece of toast and I'll split that toast in half. Half I'll use with the egg and the other half I'll put a little orange marmalade on. So I'm going to go ahead and soft boil my egg now. So I have my toast ready to go. Half of it is just butter and half of it is butter and orange marmalade. I love orange marmalade jam. It's one of my favorites. So the toast is all ready and I'm just waiting on the egg. Okay, so here's my soft boiled egg. I've got that cut in half. I'll use my spoon to kind of chop it up a little bit and spoon it onto my toast. I cooked this for a little over four minutes. I really like the whites to be completely set up, but the yolk's a little bit runny still. So that is my breakfast. We've got my toast part with butter for the eggs and the other part with orange marmalade. And then I've got my cup of coffee. So that's breakfast this morning, nice and simple. Today for lunch is a leftovers from last night's dinner. And last night I really did enjoy the um, sweet red chili sauce as well as the soy sauce on that. So I've added that to this today as well. So that's today's lunch leftovers. We always love having leftovers for lunch. Tonight for dinner, I'm doing a baked ravioli casserole here. So I've cooked up some of Trader Joe's mini raviolis, and now I'm cooking up some ground beef, some hamburger here, and then I'm gonna mix it all together with some marinara sauce and cheese, and then we'll bake that in the oven for a bit. Whenever I'm cooking ground beef, I love to add a little bit of chopped onion. It really helps the flavor quite a bit with that. So that is what I'm making tonight for dinner. I'll show you when I get this assembled and ready to go into the oven. Okay, so I've got my pasta all mixed up here. I cooked the hamburger, then I added in the marinara sauce. I tested the marinara sauce and it was a little bit on the acidic side. So I added about a tablespoon of sugar as well and about a cup and a half of Colby Jack shredded cheese. And I've sprayed my casserole dish here and preheated the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna transfer the casserole into my casserole dish, cover it with the lid. This uh, casserole dish has a lid, otherwise I would have just used foil. And I'm gonna go ahead and bake that until it uh, the cheese melts through and the flavors have a chance to combine about 25 to 30 minutes. So here's my casserole ready to go in the oven. I've topped it with a little bit of a little bit more cheese, just a teeny tiny bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven. I'll also be serving it with a side of veggies, probably either broccoli or a broccoli cauliflower carrot blend. So that is tonight's dinner. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all out of the oven. The casserole is out of the oven. You can see it boiled over a little bit. It was a very packed casserole dish. But that's okay, it's all cooked through and it smells delicious. I've also heated up um, 
some veggies in the microwave. I'm just using the Jolly Green Giant or the Green Giant Simply Steam Tuscan Seasoned Broccoli. So I'll be interested to see what that tastes like as well. So I'm going to go ahead now and serve up dinner. Here's our dinner all served up on a plate. I've got some of the Tuscan Seasoned Broccoli and our delicious baked ravioli casserole. So that is tonight's dinner. It was very simple. A very easy baked ravioli casserole and a side of broccoli. This will also make really wonderful leftovers for lunch. I'm sure we'll have a lot of leftovers. And here's my breakfast this morning. I'm keeping it pretty simple. All week I've been pretty busy, so I haven't done um, a ton of breakfasts. If I go out and about with an early um, appointment, I will often not um, have breakfast before I leave um, and just have a bigger lunch later, but today, I just thought I'd go for something quick. These are the Jimmy Dean uh, Delights Egg Witches. This is a broccoli and cheese egg frittata. And these are okay. Um, the cheese, I'm not super fond of the cheese in it, but otherwise they're pretty good. I do like the broccoli and the egg flavor and the turkey sausage, or I should say chicken sausage inside is pretty good. So just a very simple quick breakfast this morning along with my cup of coffee. Today for lunch I'm in the mood for something quick and easy that I like to have occasionally for lunch and that is a cheese quesadilla. So I've just got some flour tortillas here and some Mexican style cheese. I've got my tortilla on my little griddle here. I'll top this with cheese and put the top on and we'll flip it when it's cooked on one side and the cheese is melted through. And then I'll show you how I top it. Here's my quesadilla cooking away and I have out some toppings here for it. I'm going to use the peach pineapple salsa that we really enjoy, sour cream, and some green taco sauce. And I've got a little pizza wheel that I'll use to cut it up when it's all ready. So here it is, all cooked up, and now I'm going to go ahead and slice it up and get the toppings on. So here's my cheese quesadilla all cut up, and the toppings, I've got the sour cream and the green taco sauce and the pineapple peach salsa on the side. And because I'm having pineapple peach salsa, I decided I would also have a little side of some peaches, some sliced peaches. So that is my lunch today. Nice and simple, very quick to fix, and I really love the way this tastes. Tonight is the last dinner for this video um, for what we eat in a week. So I thought I would finish up our week with a nice simple recipe, just a chicken and rice bake. Um, chicken and mushroom and rice bake, I should say. So I've got some chicken breast tenderloins. They're frozen. I've got a couple cans of cream of mushroom soup and some rice and a can of mushroom pieces. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to get out a mixing bowl. I'm going to empty my soup into it and um, then I'm going to add some milk and water and get that all mixed together. Okay, so now I'm adding um, one cup of milk and two cups of water. I just kind of mix them together in my measuring cup here. I'm just gonna sprinkle in some pepper here. I'm also gonna shake in some seasoning salts, just a little bit of Lowry's there. It looks like a lot, but it really just spread out over the top quite a bit. It's probably not even a teaspoon. And then a little bit of parsley. Just, I like parsley for a little bit of uh, color, a little bit of green color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get this all stirred together. Um, and then I will come back and add, we'll add our mushrooms and our rice. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my little can here of mushroom pieces and stems and I've drained that out. This is just a 6.5 ounce can. I have a bunch of these in my pantry. I usually like incorporating these mushrooms in my pasta sauce but I also like them in this recipe too. And now I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of uncooked white rice. Okay and then I'm going to go ahead and get this all stirred together and then I'm going to transfer it to this baking dish here. This is a little bit bigger than a, a 9 by 13. Also got my oven preheating to 375, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and transfer it to my pan here. Okay, so I've got my mixture poured into my pan here. And I did also spray my pan with a little bit of pan spray first. I'm using my whisk to kind of move the um, mixture around just so I can make sure that the rice is distributed evenly throughout the pan. I don't want like one space that's got a big clump of rice. So I'm just kind of double checking it, moving it around. Same with the little mushrooms just to make sure it's nice and evenly mixed. And I'm going to go ahead and take my frozen chicken tenderloins and just lay them in here like so. Just like that. I'll probably put eight in here or however many will fit. That one was kind of big. 
see if I can find a smaller one here. There's one. Um, let's see if I can fit one more. Okay, here's one. We'll kind of move that over, see if we can tuck that one in there. Okay, so we've got our chicken in here now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the chicken away and get out some foil. I'm going to totally cover this in foil, making sure to seal all the edges. But before I put the foil on, I forgot one last thing that I'd like to top this with, a little bit of paprika. Again, just mostly for color. I'm just going to go over where the chicken is. So now it's ready for the foil. My pan is completely covered with foil. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven for around about an hour until the chicken is thoroughly cooked. I'll probably check this around an hour and use my meat thermometer to check that the chicken is thoroughly cooked through especially because the chicken is still frozen in here. I do cook this from frozen, but you could also cook this with thawed out chicken. Um, you would just shorten the cooking time probably closer to 35 to 45 minutes or so. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this in my oven at 375 degrees, and I'll come back when it's all done and show you how we serve up dinner. Our chicken mushroom rice bake is out of the oven. You can see it's nice and brown. That paprika gave it a really nice flavor, as did the mushrooms and the parsley. I think it looks really delicious. It's steaming hot, you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this served up. I made sure to temp check the chicken with my meat thermometer just to make sure it was cooked all the way through. It did take an hour and a half to cook. My oven has been running a little bit cooler lately, so after an hour it wasn't cooked, so I, I put it up to 400 and cooked it a little bit longer. It also probably had to do with the fact that my chicken was frozen, so it would cook quicker if you thawed your chicken or you increased the temperature or sometimes you just have to play it by ear. Everybody's oven is a little bit different. But it's all ready and I'm excited to try this out for dinner. And just to keep things easy tonight, I just warmed up some canned green beans to go along the side. So I've served up dinner. I've served up a piece of chicken with some of the mushroom rice and some green beans on the side. So that is tonight's dinner. A nice and simple chicken mushroom rice bake with green beans. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what we ate this week. So those were all the meals that we ate in a week. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at that. I hope you got a few good ideas for dinners and lunches and things like that. I hope to be filming more videos this year, sharing some of the foods that we eat around here to go along with my meal planning. Again, my meal planning and grocery haul will be back in March. I'm doing a big pantry stock up for the spring and I'll be sharing with you our March meal plan coming up in that video as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.